Hello, 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 hello. Welcome back to another tutorial. Today's going to be a bit different. Today we are taking a look at how to set up Leap Motion inside Max and then start playing about with some values in it. It's not going to be a direct tutorial on building something or making something. Now, the Leap Motion is quite interesting because of the power it gives you. But before we start in Max, we're going to need two things. You're going to need something called the AKA Leap Motion Object by Masayuki Akamatsu, hence the AKA. Uh, I hope I pronounced that right. And he's a programmer that's done a lot of really cool stuff for Max and iOS. I recommend you check out his work while you're here. And he has this here. It says for Max 6.1 but it will still do the job we need it to do. And what this is, is it's a, a little object that reads the, the raw data coming in from the Leap Motion. And on top of that, you're gonna need the Leap Motion SDK, which is the software development kit for you not familiar with it. Now, if you don't have anything installed at all, if you download the SDK, it will include the original Leap controller as well, which has a little uh, almost built-in app store for getting Leap files and Leap games. Back to AKA. When you download it, this is going to give you a zip file. And when you download that zip file, you're going to want to unzip it and place it inside your documents, Mac 7, library file. And inside it, you'll have a max dot, a dot max help and a dot MXO. And they're just two files that Max needs to understand both how to run it and uh, gives you a help file for it. And it's as simple as that, that's the AKA Leap Motion installed. And you'll see the Leap Motion also makes its own uh, file in here as well. But I digress. So we've got AKA installed, we've got our SDK installed. Next, we, we need to open up Leap. So mine is already open and you get this nice little desktop icon. Now I've got my Leap plugged in. I can see it's gone green. I'm gonna open up the visualizer, which gives us this nice little test window. Uh, I just pushed H to bring up the menu and I can see one hand, two hands and currently I have it around 15 centimeters off the desk that's where I'm holding my hands and it's working great yeah thumbs up so we can close that now let's go into Max so when Max loads I'm going to create a new patch And then in the patch, I'm going to do AKA Leap Motion. And the fact that it autofills means that I installed it correctly, which is great news. I'm then going to alt click it and open its help window, which if you install correctly as well, will give you this window. And it gives us a simple instructions to plug in the Leap device, launch the Leap application, which is this, and then turn on this. So now if we hold our hand above it, Instead of the fancy leap picture, we're getting an entirely max run system. And we have lots of data down here referring to our, our hands, the ball of our hands, the palm of our hand, and then all the fingers. And if you include two hands, you get two of everything. Ooh. And you can see as I clench into fists, it starts tracking. So it's all happening in real time and it's all happening really quickly. And in a simple answer, that is us. That is us opened Bleep and we've got it plugged into Max. But what happens if we want to actually start doing something with the data? So here's a little variation I made on that original demo uh, help patch. And what it is, is we've got the Z movement of my palm and controlling this 3D object, which is just a torus. And the way we do that is that we take the data we had coming out of here and then we slice it. So we start cutting down the information we need. So if I close that, which we don't need anymore, and bring up, this is my cutoff version of everything here. So you can see that when the hand moves in, I'm specifically looking at the palm here because the fingers are a bit too delicate for a backwards, forward, left and right movement. But I can see with the palm that when I move it back and forward, I can see the Z file updating as we go. Now, what would I need to do if I wanted to collect that Z? And the answer is already over here. 
So I'm sending my PAM data out. Leap Motion just has a, a root. But the data output order is the frame start, the frame, the hand, and then a fingers, palm, and ball for each hand. And in the end, I know that I need the one, two, three, four, fifth icon. One, two, three, four, five. So now I'm getting my PAM data. I send it to a send object. And then from there, I would now, I'm now getting this entire string of data that tells me its position above the motion, the direction that it thinks it's traveling, the current acceleration on it, and then the normal. So then to access this data, I know I specifically want the Z, I need to start cutting it up, so I use the slice. I slice the first four pieces of data off, which gives me one, two, three, four, and I'm left with one more. So I then take what's left and slice the first off. So now I'm left with just the Z, and I send that out into my 3D visualization patch. Literally, it takes the, the data from my hand, scales it a bit. If you know all this stuff at the top, it scales it a bit, and then it sends it out again. So by holding my hand back and over the top of it in trial and error, I learned that uh, it roughly goes between 150 and a fifth, uh, minus 150 and 150, depending on where it my hand's positioned. Scale it, send that out into my, uh, or my, my render, which controls my camera, and there you go, I'm suddenly moving it. And that's just a really quick look at how to hook up Leap Motion into Max MSP using AKA Leap Motion and the fantastic Leap SDK.